Hello, 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 and welcome to the Drag Race Recap here on Reality TV Rehap Ups. I'm your host, Liana Boris, and we are here to talk about episode nine of RuPaul's Drag Race season 15. We are having a ball celebrating the 200th episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, which has been on the air for 15 years. A little bit of an existential crisis for me, but we move. <laughs> First with us here today is the one, the only, so happy celebrating his birthday, chatting with me about Drag Race. It is Amon Adwin. Amon, how are you? And happy birthday. Thank you. I am well. I am good. Uh, I'm, alive. I'm, I'm here. I'm alive. Yep. There we go. <laughs> and here we uh, are talking to Drag Race. <laughs> exactly. Beth is feeling a little bit under the weather, so she's not going to be joining us today. But I do have some of her thoughts that we'll be peppering in throughout. So you will get her opinion for sure throughout this podcast. So as I mentioned, it is the 15th anniversary of Drag Race. We had the 200th episode and we had a jam packed episode. Yeah. This was again, only an hour episode. So about 40 minutes of runtime, but they managed to pack in a mini challenge, a maxi challenge, the whole runway, a walkthrough, Rue's weird dancing performance thing uh and of course critiques and all of that Amon how did you feel the way this episode was edited because to me it felt like oh okay this I don't know it felt like a normal episode yeah it felt full I remember when I was watching it last night I was like wait a second I thought we weren't getting the 90 minutes until next month it, it felt like it was like a 90 minute episode because of all this stuff that was packed into there and like the runways themselves like weren't like blinking you miss it this time they were like we got to like actually see which i guess you would need to because it's a ball challenge but yeah it was uh i was i was very uh i was very engaged the entire way through mm -hmm. i'd love the episode I was as well. And I know, and, and you look, you know, Beth had one critique about this. Thank God in 60 minute episodes, we still have time for Rue to lip sync worse than sugar and spice. A little dig there. <laughs> but even that didn't even feel like, oh, we're wasting time on this because we didn't spend time on other places. We even got yeah. like Anitra's mirror moment, which, oh my gosh, what a heartbreaking story. As you oh, mentioned, no. it really did feel like such a full episode. Yeah. I mean, it felt like, I, I feel like, you know, because they, they went to MTV and then they found out that they were not going to get the 90 minutes anymore. So they had to truncate a bunch of the episodes. And I feel like this was the episode where they finally got the hang of it. Like, mm -hmm. they were, all the other ones were like choppy, choppy, choppy. And this one was like, OK, we know what we're doing now. So, yeah, I, yeah. I think that they re did a really good job. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree. I was really pleased with this episode and I was pleased with the way that they did the maxi challenge, which I think let's just jump on in. Let's talk about the main event here on the episode, which is the ball. So mm -hmm. for the 15th anniversary, we are throwing a crystal ball because the 15th anniversary <laughs> gift is crystal. I loved that. Uh, the crystal method ball, if you will, <laughs> because, oh my gosh, I think it was Anitra who had the line time is of the Jada Essence Hall. I'm going to start yes. using that. <laughs> That's fantastic. So the queens have to prepare three looks. We know they usually bring two from home and then the third one they craft that uh, day or that cycle in the workroom. So the three looks, the first one is start your engines, which is based on the iconic race suit that was used in the season one promos and obviously has continued after that so a reinvention mm -hmm. of that an update on the racing suit the second look is they can pick any ball challenge from rupaul's drag race history and then make a look that would have corresponded to that so the ball ball the hair ball the bag ball yeah. and we'll see some of those looks as we go through all of them and then of course the crystallized eleganza dripping in crystals not dripping in jewels from season I think six, but dripping in crystals here. Amon, mm -hmm. were you happy with the categories that they chose? Yeah, I love the first one because, it, you know, the whole uh, theme, the promo for this season was really like back to basics, going mm -hmm. getting back into the racer theme. So I thought that was a nice callback. Um, and then I, I love anything shiny. So I was living <laughs> my whole Swarovski life up in there for the uh, crystal eleganza and the, uh, the, 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 the ball, what's the second one? The bag ball, the whatever it is. Well, it was like my favorite ball. So you could pick Your... whatever ball from RuPaul's Drag Race history and then do yeah. that, like a look from that. I kind of, I mean, I I like the callback once again. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish that it was a little bit more centered, a little bit more focused because I feel like it was sort of hard to follow everything. They had to 
repeatedly tell us which ball they were referencing. Um, but other than that, yeah, I think that all of them were were pretty pretty stellar. So. I wish that they had done, now that you bring that up, I almost <clears throat> wish that they had assigned the previous balls to each of the queens, right? There's nine. Yeah. You can pick nine balls from the previous seasons because we had a lot of people doing the ball ball. We had a lot of people doing the bag ball. I think the hair ball maybe was the one that also got a lot. So it just felt like you yeah. could have referenced other other balls in there, you know, because it felt like, oh, we've only done Right. Three. I was like, I know we didn't have <laughs> yeah. way more balls than this. Why are we only handling these couple of balls? It's giving it's giving ball shortage <laughs> exactly we love all balls equally we should celebrate them all because yeah, mm -hmm. i think we only have five we get the the balls ball the bag ball the hair ball the money ball the sugar ball at least those are the ones that i wrote down we can see if we can find some extra as we go through that but also like too bad sugar wasn't here of course you would have done that the sugar ball <laughs> spice should have done the sugar ball in i in know yeah sugar with now 50% less sugar. <laughs> okay, I have all of the looks pulled up. So I think what we should do is go queen by queen and talk about their set of looks, essentially the portfolio of looks that they brought for the ball challenge. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, the order that I'm going in is the order of the first runway look because there's a little bit of mixing up uh, as each of the three different sort of runway looks they changed order so if you are following along uh, audio only you can go to the video version if you want to look as a reference for what we're talking about if you're already watching the youtube video hi <laughs> all right <laughs> mistress hey, hey. <laughs> mistress <laughs> isabel brooks is up first this set of looks puts her in the top. As Beth says, Beth thinks that Mistress killed all of the looks and should have won all three categories. She had one, if not the best look. Amon, how do you feel about that? So, I mean, I, I definitely think that she's towards the top. I don't know if she should have won. Um, the, the beach ball look is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I, I love the beach ball titties. I love the little... the. I don't even know what you would call that ponytail anal beat looking thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's really Yep. laughs> Those are really, really fun. Um, I wish that we could have seen the quotes a little bit more because on the racer suit, she said that she put a bunch of quotes from all the big girls that have ever been on the show. Mm -hmm. I wish that those would have been highlighted a little bit more um, as a centerpiece. And the crystal look, I mean, obviously she's a seamstress. She knows what she's doing. It's a beautiful silhouette. I do wish that it was a little bit more shiny. I think that the I think that the the fabric obviously is sparkly, but it was sort of hard to see it on the runway. It kind of mm. looked washed out to me. So all I could really get shine from was the crystals that are like right over her right over her her boobies. So like mm -hmm. I kind of wish there was a little bit more going on there, or at least a little bit more sparkle. But it's obviously a very beautiful gown, and uh, yeah, she definitely towards the top. I don't know if I agree that she should have won though. Mm -hmm. Return of the Loaf, obviously, also for the crystal mm -hmm. look that we see. You love to see it. I mean, this is something that we know that Mistress made a conscious decision of when it comes to her last look. Because in the walkthrough, when she's talking with Carson and Rue, Mistress says, you know, I'm I'm not going to, like, stick everything to my body, right? Less is more for me. And I think that the fabric, I do get what you're saying, that because you can't tell, like, there were certain angles where I could tell if the fabric was really shiny so maybe it doesn't give that full like dripping in jewels eleganza but I think the way that she added the sleeve pieces with like the dripping down chains of crystals I think that that helps to elevate it up there mm -hmm. I totally see what Beth is saying I actually at first when I was watching the episode I think I just didn't have time to process everything the only things I remember thinking was I think luck should have been in the top and then everything else felt like a blur. But going back and re-looking at all of Mistress's looks, I, I actually do agree that I think I probably would have given her the win, especially for the bag ball look, because I feel like there were very few looks in that category that really slayed for me. Yeah. Maybe that goes to the prompt, right, of like maybe it was too open-ended. 
But this I thought was like such a perfect execution of that, as you mentioned with the anal beads, with the titties, <laughs> like everything just worked. Um, yeah, I and the the quotes, I think that probably is a little bit of an editing issue. Maybe we could have cut down Rue's performance time to spend a little bit of time looking to see yes. what 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 you know what are all the quotes that are on there and from afar it could look a little bit messy it looks like you just kind of stuck bumper stickers to her but maybe that's what she's going for it's like a car with bumper stickers like stuck yeah. all over her <laughs> it kind of reminded me of uh selena as titties look um mm. a few weeks back with the like the street signs and everything on there it, mm. looked, it looked a little tacked on but <clears throat> i yeah the, so I, I wish that we could have gotten a little bit more time with those just so that it would like kind of fall into place a little bit more because from afar it kind of just looks like okay what's going on but mm -hmm. um i mean i get the message for sure mm -hmm. Uh, maybe also because I wanted her, like, I felt she did so strong in both of the design challenges. So almost kind of feel like, give her her praise here. <laughs> like, right. Give her, give her her win. Um, I think I think she may have deserved it. But we'll, we, you know, we can talk about when we get to Sasha Colby's look, the ultimate winner here in this challenge. Mm -hmm. So as we mentioned, Mistress did the bag ball challenge and Sugar, who we're going to talk about next. Spice. I, or Spice. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> sugar and spice on the mind uh she's doing the oh wait no they both did the balls ball challenge sorry balls ball bag ball there's too many bees in I life know. right now i know okay. <laughs> both the balls ball challenge uh for spice here and look i think that it's tough when you have looks that you brought from home but it is always sort of the same silhouette and she does get that in the walkthrough and so i love how her interpretation for from the walkthrough critiques was oh okay so more fabric yeah. <laughs> like make something different meant more fabric to spice and you know what that's kind of serving so you know good for her but ultimately the way that the look the last look turned out is does feel a little unfinished like mm -hmm. fabric that was just tied together at least for the bottom part yeah obviously like not her strong suit in terms of design but i think i do i really do like the racer suit i love the checkered heels those are really really mm -hmm. fun um and the thigh highs those, it's just it, it, it the whole thing works and it's a little bit different of a silhouette from what we usually get from her so i thought that she was coming out strong i was like oh okay all right mm -hmm. spice okay let's see what's going on and then you get to this one, the, the ball ball, and it's kind of, you know, a similar silhouette to what we've seen. Still a, a specific point of view that I think that sometimes the judges don't really give credit for, to her for. I, I think it's, a, it's very well put together. It's, a, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very tight knit. I, I do like the look, but it is okay. Mm, give me a little bit more zhuzh. And then finally for the crystal look, I mean, it's not bad. Um, it definitely, it, it looks good, but uh, uh, the best part about it is the corset. And it is a little, yeah. it is a little egregious that uh, she did just carry the same purse and just put <laughs> Twice. Like, yeah. some disco ball stuff on it. It's a little <laughs> egregious. Like, all right, girl, like, we see you. <laughs> Yeah, like you think you can get away with that. Um, but she's delusional enough that I think she believes it. I mean, I I actually, you know, this we sort of see this a lot where you have queens who have a very specific look or very specific style, think like dots on your face or, you know, right, something that is like very uniquely you. And I think that Spice has sugar and spice have that doll look down. I think it's a matter about taking that aesthetic and then being able to also sort of fit it into other categories, which as you mentioned, the first look is super solid. I think that sort of takes that doll aesthetic, but still gives us something different. Um, and the shoes that are just absolutely stunning also ties in her own catchphrase. Very smart. <laughs> love to see. We love a marketing queen. Mm -hmm. the the last look i i do agree with you that the bustier is probably the best part and even that is like a little loose fitting at times mm -hmm. when she would move around and then the skirt is just it's you know it it it's a mess for this season's standards because right. i would say that on other seasons she walks out in this and she's safe for sure for sure. It, it it just reminds you just like how far this show really has come. Because if mm -hmm. this was like season five, we'd be like, oh, my God. Yeah. Walking the runways of Paris. Love it. But yeah. 
obviously now it's like we, you know, we're kind of like with Michelle on this one. It's like, oh, you just, you kind of just put a little couple pieces of fabric together. You tied them. Like, it's not really, it's not very, it's, the, the ingenuity isn't really there for it. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really match the top either with the the way that she did the sides. So yeah, yeah. It's just a little yeah, little bit of it's a little disjointed looking. Yeah, yeah, a little disjointed. Next is Lux. So this is someone who I thought the first time watching through, I felt like she should have been in the top, and then. Then I went through and I looked at the looks again and I was like, is it one of those things where it's like, or is she just skinny kind of thing? Like, Mm -hmm. is this look really good or is she just skinny? I do think the last look is fabulously crafted. I think it's really good. I'm still obsessed with the hair piece for the center one. I love her motocross interpretation. So I don't know. Maybe (laughs) maybe I do think she should be in the top. I don't know, Mon. Where do you come down on Lux? I think she should have won. I think she would have won. Oh, I. I I also took a second. I was like, is it the skinny thing? Is it just because she's yeah. pretty? And then I was like, no, I think that she was. And even in an untucked, she was like, look, without a doubt, I should have been in the top. I don't know why I'm not in the top. Like, this look is really, really good. Like, and I was like, yeah, you're you're kind of being a little arrogant, but you're actually right. Like, that, I think it was one of the more creative looks. It sparkles. It shines. It's eleganza. I don't really know what Malaysia was trying to get across when she was like, "Well, they didn't ask for that. They asked for, they asked for a ball." I was like, "Well, okay, that that's what she's she's it's, she's giving it to you." Like, I don't yeah. understand. It's it's very sugar plum. It's very it's fun. And that 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 blue wig is just it it's just delectable. I love it. And then mm-hmm. I'm assuming she probably made all of these because she knows what she's doing. That mm-hmm. the hair one is great, and the motocross one. I mean, it it it's 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 fine. It's probably what the weakest of the three, but mm-hmm. I think that the other two really make up for it. So I was shocked that she was safe. I don't. I'm not really sure what they didn't like about it enough for her to mm-hmm. be safe to me. I think I so yeah I okay yes so then I do feel better about being in the top and Beth actually agrees as well. She said Lux should have been in the top. I love her constructed look. Did find the band of her stockings a little distracting around her waist. Um, I don't know. To me, it blends in pretty well. I think um, maybe that's just the way that we have it posed right now. But that's the other thing with Lux is that I think the way that she presents her looks on the runway, too, is just so captivating. The like right. bend, the bending back thing she did for the hair look, the hairball look was mm-hmm. it was like, oh, my God, how do you how do you balance like that? I it's know. so it's so impressive. She had the big ass flag for the drag race um motocross look too which i think is just so fun to have that i yeah i i I don't know if i necessarily would have given her the win i think i still would have given mistress the win but i would have put lux in the top just because i think that what she was able to craft especially with the lat or with the last look was just so unique and it is as you mentioned giving that sugar plum fairy element to it that just makes it seem so sparkly and Christmassy and yeah. wonderful. I know Christmas isn't the theme, but it, that I associate that with sparkles. <laughs> so <laughs> if crystals and sparkles is the theme, then I think that Lux really hit the nail on the head. And even she says in Untugged, I met the prompt flawlessly. <laughs> she really did. She and really you know did. what? Like, I, I live for it. I live for it. And the fact that she made it, it's like... It, like, I, I I most certainly couldn't make anything like that. So I, yeah, I, I, I definitely should have been in the top. I'm not really sure what the judge, they must've been smoking whatever, uh, smoking that weed that Sasha was wearing on her head. Cause uh, I'm not really yeah. getting it here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on, on Sasha's look. We got a few more to talk about some, some safe looks here with Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. She also does the bag ball look, which actually I, I couldn't even, if you had told me this was the bag ball, I would not have been able to tell you that. But maybe that's the point. I don't know. I couldn't tell you either. And like I was thinking the same thing. I was like, is because if it's if it's really well constructed and it's like, oh my god, it's from bags. Is that is that mm-hmm. supposed to be the gag? Mm-hmm. But no, I feel like you need to like when you have people like Mistress coming out, obviously being an unequivocal beach ball. Mm-hmm. It's hard <laughs> then to be like, okay. It, no, I, mean, I, mean, I, want, I want to see the evolution. I want to see how mm. you made that from the bags. Um, I mean, carrying the bags sort of like gives us like a little bit of a visual cue, mm-hmm. but it doesn't go far enough for me. I don't like the first look. I'm sorry, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Oh. It's ugly, ugly, ugly. I just, I can't deal with the pastel. It's just not, uh, mm-mm, mm-mm. it's giving, 
it's giving <laughs> Easter. I don't even know. It's giving something <laughs> that that I'm not putting down. Um, and the last one is it's not. I actually like the last one. I, I think that it's a uh, very well constructed. I think that she. Just giving all of that, you know, Marie Antoinette realness. It's a, it's a, it's it's a, it's a good look. Mm-hmm. It's good. Mm-hmm. I think okay. I don't hate the first look as much as you do. <laughs> I like I that she had a helmet it. with the pastels, but no, I can see, especially because the race look. It feels weird to have a pastel interpretation of the race look because it's such a vibrant, bright pink or bright red, depending on which look you're going for. So the pastel feels like kind of a weird muted version of that. So maybe it doesn't work as well. But I would say for me, I didn't hate any of her looks at all. I thought they were all solid, but I also didn't feel like oh my gosh, this is so stunning, which I almost, unfortunately for this crop of queens, like you just, you have to have that, oh my gosh, kind of Mm -hmm. look to put you up into the top. And so I know Marsha was a little bit surprised that she ended up in the safe category, but I do think that that's probably where I would have put her. And I think that all of the looks that she displayed on the runway, they were safe. Good. Yeah, this is, this is simply safe. I do think that she definitely gave a little bit more than what she usually does on the runway Mm -hmm. this time around because it is starting to become a little muted um so i I do if this is the trend that we're about to see for her i'm excited to see what's next because Mm -hmm. i was getting a little worried that those runways were just never going to be up to snuff with the rest of her sisters and that was ultimately and probably still at this point probably will ultimately be her undoing but uh Mm -hmm. we'll see what happens Mm -hmm. I think she's someone also who she clearly has like a lot of natural talent. I think she'll grow a lot after the show as well. So I could see her on an all stars. Definitely. Next up is Selena S. Titties, who does end up in the bottom and the bottom two lip syncing for her life for the series of looks. I'm on an exasperated sigh from you. Please let us let us in. What do you think about these looks? I love Selena. I really do. And a lot of the time I do understand exactly where she's coming from with her Mm -hmm. looks this time around uh, no 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 no. that money look mm -mm, mm -mm. (laughs) it's giving negative balance it's giving (laughs) insufficient funds baby i can't yeah overdrawn it's it's way overdrawn overdraft fees out the Mm -hmm. ass i just can't i can't get into it um I, i i love the concept but no, I'm sorry, girl. It's it, it, it it's just too bunchy yeah. everywhere. Your form is lost entirely. I don't know what's going on with the hair. Her makeup is always going to be good down. Like if there's one thing that Selena can do, it's beat her face. So mm-hmm. there's always that. The first look isn't bad. Um, it looks a little pedestrian. Like it doesn't. It's not really elevated enough for me. And then mm-hmm. I think that. She obviously did a beautiful job crafting the last look, but it's not giving Crystal for mm-hmm. one. And secondly, it, it is a little, it's a little loose. It's a little loose. She constantly had to pull it up the entire night through. It's just um, like, like Michelle said, she's always just almost there, mm-hmm. almost there. But there's like one little something about her taste level is just a little off. And a, a piece of me loves that because she gives you a little, little something a little, little different but this time around no no mm. i'm sorry sis i wasn't there for it and for a ball challenge too right that's yeah. like you yeah. kind of you're gonna have to be at that level i i totally agree with you for the second look for the money look especially because and we've actually seen this comment i want to say it was towards acid betty but i can't remember of like we've seen the money look done so well on the show i mean take a look these are the looks from the mm-hmm. final four of season three, the actual money ball challenge when it aired and across the board, all like Yara ended up in the bottom and I get it. There's like too much going on, <laughs> but even like Alexis also ended up in the bottom looks done. I mean, again, it's final four, but like you just see so many solid looks that were done that were crafted on that day in the workroom mm-hmm. and we're better and than what this Selena is what we're getting now. It's like, exactly. <laughs> so, and you know, she acknowledges it in Untucked that the look was a bit of a mess, a bit of a mess, a lot of a mess. Mm-hmm. Again, I like the idea, I like the idea of putting the EBT card in her hair. Again, all of that, like that personality really shines through. It's just mm-hmm. the way that the execution is that just isn't quite there. The first look is 
has fit issues, but I, she said that was on purpose and that this actually works for me. The fit issues for the last dress though, as you mentioned, are just, uh, unfortunately, I think really just take away from the whole aesthetic that she's putting together. And I, yeah. as soon as she walked around the corner, I could notice the bunching on the side and I was like, no, Selena. Yeah, I know. Uh, Cause she just has such a magnanimous personality and I just have really enjoyed getting to know her and to see her perform in the show. <laughs> I just, I want to help her in that element, but I think she's someone else like get in contact with some good designers, take another sewing class. And I think you'll be fine. Just brutal. Yeah, definitely another all-star in my heart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same. I, she's got personality for days, so I think she'll be able to, to carry that through. All right, next is Malaysia. She is safe for these looks. I actually didn't realize how close the first and second look <laughs> were yeah. color-wise until looking at them right now. Both that, like, pastel pink, which I do think... I don't know why. I just don't like that it's the same color. <laughs> it, it looks me. like the the same. It just looks. It's just pants instead of a skirt this time right. around. Like it's, it's <laughs> in a different wig. Like yeah, yeah this was. It's, I think she's a little. She's lucky that Selena and mm. and Spice were here because I don't know. I think she's another one where it's like sometimes these looks just don't land. Mm. Um, the the hair one I think is 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 probably. Probably the strongest. I don't know. Maybe the first, I don't know. I, don't know. I hate it. <laughs> it's my least favorite of the three. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, I was. That was a tough sale. I, <laughs> <laughs> What's the color? Because it looks different. So you're like, oh yeah, this is the strongest because it's like it. You know, she's got the black and white palette. I, I, I don't know. It just it that also looked like something that would have been made if she were actually doing the ball challenge, which is wild because the last look I do think is stronger. <laughs> she made yeah. that one. And for someone who's not a sewer, that was very surprising. But yeah, her looks to me were very like meh, if not the, for the middle one. Yeah. The, now that I'm looking at it, it's, it, she's, it swallows her up. Like it's mm -hmm. not, it, it's Cruella DeVille on her worst day. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah gosh i oof, yeah i don't know i'm just I'm not, i mean I'm, not, I'm happy to see something different but i just think that the way that it fit it just didn't it just didn't look it didn't feel cohesive either it totally felt like just a bunch of different pieces sort of stuck all over her yeah. uh i mean that being said she knows that that pink pastel color looks great on her which it does so <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that she utilized that she did utilize a little bit of a different color for the crystal look um but it's yeah it's, it's it's safe, a little bit samey samey. It's simply safe, yeah. I, I could see her maybe if Lucy's looks had been a little bit better falling into that like bottom but safe kind of slot, um, specifically because of the middle look, but yeah, and then she's like over here coming for Lucy oh <laughs> during Unduck. I was like, girl, you're doing a lot of hooting and hollering for someone that didn't do that well this challenge. <laughs> oh my god, I know, right? I just I'm like, she's like, I need a new target for my I'm gonna yeah. stay in the competition for going after people and like lucy for some reason was the choice that she decided to go with yeah like, I, I didn't understand like why she was so bothered by lucy talking about her it looks like well i didn't like it and i mm -hmm. you know I, I i didn't i didn't really uh the judges also got said the same thing they agreed with me and i was like well they didn't they didn't say that it's fine if you don't like the look, but they didn't say that they didn't understand what it was. It just wasn't great. <laughs> also, you weren't there. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I like... disagreed with you. <laughs> okay. Maybe in the retelling, she she got enough. But anyway. All right. Next up is the aforementioned Lucy DeLuca, who ends up in the bottom for these looks with a, I think she said Princess Peach inspired. Uh, yeah look for the the first look which was the uh racing suit the bag ball which looked like a regular outfit with just some plastic bags stuck to it um and then yeah. her runner up gown for the final look yeah um i was kind of shocked about all of this because she crowns herself as a designer she was like waiting for this she's like i'm ready for this challenge this is something that i'm going to excel in and she comes out swinging the first look is mm -hmm. fantastic i think it's probably the strongest out of the racer looks um and then the second one girl <laughs> what are you doing like what design where where like i'm 
just put the whole thing in a plastic bag and send it on down. Like, what is going on? Like, and then I totally agreed with Carson on the last look. If she had just taken that trim down just a little further, it would have just made for such a more pleasant silhouette. It's mm -hmm. not bad. Mm -hmm. And it's it's definitely sparkly, not sparkly enough, but it's sparkly. But yeah, I just feel like she kind of just like she started off strong and then she sort of petered out. I was like, this is kind of strange. For someone who I, likes to design, I'm not, mm -mm, no. Right. I, so I, okay. I want to take them one look at a time because I also do feel like they all felt like such individual, I can't give the same critique for all of them, right? You really have to like give individual critiques yeah. depending on the look. So if yeah. we start with the last one, the constructed look, I mean, obviously well-constructed. I love the fact that she is telling this story along with it too, right? You're sort of engaging with us on the runway. I agree with the the mermaid silhouette. It is a little bit too high, but overall, I would say safe. Like I would say, this is a good safe look. Yeah. Then let's talk about the first look, the runway or the uh, racer look, which I think, yeah, I do think this is really solid. I maybe would have chosen different patterns for the fabric, like the non-sparkly fabric, the red fabric. It did feel a little bit kind of all over the place, but I love the idea yeah. of of doing this sort of princess peach or maybe more like with the anime hair kind of style look i love that i think that's out of the box i think that's really unique this by itself maybe would have put in the top and then we get to the middle look which yeah it's just again it's just the i, I can't remember who made the comment of the saint Pauli's girl just stuck with bags and again she, i think she tries to elevate it with the story of the I just picked up poop, but it came out of my titties. Like, I don't know that I didn't quite get either in terms no. of the story is like, that's you. <laughs> it's maybe just not my sense of humor. She's got the, you know, the crown made out. Like I could see the idea of where she was coming from, but yeah, then the whole dress should be made out of bags too. Or like, you know, there needs to be more like one crown of bags does not a bag ball outfit make. So it just it just felt very half assed. Definitely a bottom look, I would yeah. say for sure. And therefore, I think that whole package together is what ultimately resulted in her landing in the bottom. Yeah, it felt very phoned in. It was like, mm -hmm. OK, I, I know we're going to have to do three looks this time. Let me go ahead and get started on the race for one and then she ran out of time and then just like was like okay yeah. I just have to put something together and hopefully hopefully the racer is enough to make me safe that's that's uh, what I'm getting from uh, part of me is like did she have a look the second look or like did something happen to it I don't know yeah this be something that she hadn't that she had brought with her and then just glued a bunch of little bags to it in order to just be like crap 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 like I need something right. for this look that's just how it feels I don't because every other look looks like okay you probably brought this from home especially if you made the last look this one i, I believe she could have made both <laughs> yeah like it's yeah i feel like for someone that likes to design i just there has to be something more to this like maybe mm -hmm. maybe i'll watch the roscoe's if she's at roscoe's i'll watch and see if she has any behind the scenes mm -hmm. maybe maybe something happened to the other look maybe it, it caught on fire i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it spontaneously combusted <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who knows <laughs> Next, we have the winner of this week's ball challenge. We have Miss Sasha Colby. So I'm going to start out here with Beth's thoughts because Beth is, I feel like, the strongest Sasha Colby fan on the panel. And she says, while Sasha looked beautiful, I wasn't blown away by her first look and felt like the structure of Lux's was stronger than what she put together. What do you think, Amon? Where do you come down on this? I mean, I know you think Lux should have won, so obviously then someone's got to drop down out of that slot. Do you think that Sasha would have been safe or still in the top? I think that it's fair for Sasha to be in the top. Um, the first look, I mean, she does look very stunning. Um and it is a it's a it's definitely sort of like a unique interpretation of a race or like making it into a sort of like a gown skirt type deal. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Love it. The second one, uh, I mean, it, cool. You're you're giving us the weed, but I don't like the silhouette. I feel like she looks very boxy. I don't mm -hmm. I don't think that it accentuates her form very well. Um, and I don't think that it's I mean, we've seen weed on the run before. So I'm kind of like, yeah whatever mm -hmm. um and then the last one uh <laughs> what is it like it's just a <laughs> skirt with some crystals like and then she cut it out and made like a little I, mm -mm. no <laughs> 
Okay. No. <laughs> so, so I, I think for me, it ends up with a battle of that last high spot to be either Sasha or Anitra for me. And it's almost like I'm, I'm more nitpicking what I didn't like about the looks. Because I would say between the two of them, I think the first look, um, like for Sasha here, for her runway look, I think that it's solid, safe, could be part of a high package if the other looks are very strong. The weed look, I actually agree with you that I feel like the silhouette, there's something about the way her waist is defined Yep. that it's not <laughs> defined <laughs> that yeah. it doesn't it doesn't like give her that shape but I, lo I love the campiness of you know she's doing the dime bag i think hers was the bag ball yeah interpretation ball. although again i wouldn't have known that but you know she's going with the bag so but i don't know if like are the rest of the pieces it doesn't look like the rest of it was made out of bags but again i don't know if that was part of the brief if you had to make it out of those materials obviously not because mistress didn't it's not like she got the world's giantest beach ball and then made it like it's clearly a latex look with beach balls so okay so maybe it's okay it's camp it's cute it's giving us laganja I just don't think the last look is all that good. It's I'm not. Sorry. I just, yeah. I just, okay. First of all, she kept stepping on the the skirt loincloth part of it. So <laughs> that I know other queens have gotten in trouble for. So I'm actually shocked they didn't say anything because I saw it happen multiple times on the runway. And then the top is just those appliques sewn together. That's yeah, it. Like that's all. That's it. It's it, in terms of like construction, I think Lux did a far better job, yes. especially with the material that was given. This, mm, she looks pretty, but she's always going to look pretty. I uh, know, I know. And I feel like I don't know. It's giving rigor mortis. It's giving a little heavy-handed Sasha love, and I don't like to be the natural contrarian, but mm. like I'm like. Are we padding the girls' wins? Like, what's going on? So, yeah, yeah, I I did get that sense too because also shoes are the accessory. She had those. The bracelets are the accessory. She had those. The earrings are the accessory. She had those. She added the I assume the the tree branch <laughs> things, but to me that doesn't really fit cohesively with the outfit and also the fabric mm -hmm. of the, the appliques doesn't really match the bot. It felt like she made that top applique piece, which I do think is really stunning. And then was like, okay, what am I going to do for the rest of this? Right. And then everything else kind of felt like, okay, I'm not just going to do thought. this. I'm, you know, yeah, I'm not a seamstress, but I know it works for my body, which again, you can't deny her body is stunning. Uh, but I, I do think that it's a little bit of, yeah, I don't know if it's the Sasha Colby favoritism or the relying on that body, but I, God, now thinking about it, I don't know. I might have dropped her to safe just because I think Anitra's last look was mwah, perfection. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm going to, I'll be interested to see if this happens again, because mm. if it happens again, when on a week where it's like, did she need to win that? I'm going to be like, okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. all right, now <laughs> we see what's going on, but uh, whatever, we'll give it to her. Yeah, you know, exactly. We didn't make the decision. She also, you know, it's all the judges. They made the decision. Good for her. Mm -hmm. Good for her. The last look we're going to talk about, the last set of looks we're going to talk about is from Anitra. And if that middle look had been not WTF, I definitely <laughs> think she would have won here because the way that they were gagged for her final crafted look, like the first look is like solid, but then the second look, she did the sugar ball, which I was so happy to see another ball because at mm -hmm. that point we had only had, I think, four represented on the runway. But I think Carson asked about it. Like, what are your titties? What, yeah. what is that? What, what is that? <laughs> Ta yeah. Taffy, I think was what she said. Taffy titties, yep. Taffy titties. <laughs> kind of looks like, I don't even know. It's, I don't think it goes far enough, you know, like it's, yeah. it's sugar ball. Like I want to, I want to feel like I'm in candy land. I want to see more candy bits all over your body. I just want to see all of that. And I feel like mm -hmm. this is like a rejected Katy Perry teenage dream costume. That's what I'm oh, getting Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. With the yellow and the purple too. <laughs> I mm -hmm. can see it in the lollipop, all of yep. that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think especially too, when you have some really solid candy ball looks uh, from season 
five. Yeah. From season five to you like, can't help. It's the same thing that Selena has titties, the same problem that she had where I go back and I look at even the looks that were in the bottom, which I think detox and jinx were in the bottom for that. Maybe jinxes. No, I don't even, I don't even think jinxes was that bad. Uh, I just, I just, I really don't like the scent. I just really don't like her middle look, like at all, at yeah. all, at all. Yeah, it's it's very, very weak. I feel like I feel like it'd be better if she didn't even have those titties on there, like. Right? Yeah, it's so weird. They look like. But snakes. then that takes away like all the candy because I, I think all <laughs> all the, the candies look on her hip, and that would have been it. You know what I mean? Ugh, oh, what's the yeah. sash? Is it like? What? Well, I think. Uh, I think so. The bottom part has the gumdrops on it. But the top part doesn't. I feel like she should have removed the titties, put the gumdrops on the top part, and then added a couple lollipops. More lollipops. <laughs> I don't know. Always more lollipops. Wait, I think that mic is... Always more lollipops. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mon's going to adjust his audio quality. While I gush about this last look, I... Oh my gosh. When she turned around and I picked two stills of it because I'm obsessed with this as well. I just think she looked the way it fit her body. One amazing Two, mm -hmm. I loved the neckline of the, the sort of deep mid chest plunge, but the way that she stuck on all of those little crystals on the sleeves, mm -hmm. on the spine, just really looked so good and so cool so like still dripping in crystals but edgy it was giving me like lady gaga born this way mm. era very like bare bones classic beauty like I, yeah i just I, I love the spine and then along the arms as well it's just uh it's just very very enticing mm -hmm. to look at Mm -hmm. exactly oh and she her confessionals too i'm happy we got to see more anitra personality in this episode her confessional for this while she's doing the runway <laughs> was like yeah no, no no this is very uncomfortable what am i saying yeah. <laughs> what am i talking about <sighs> uh fashion is is uh is pain and she's got that run or the mermaid silhouette just right just everything mm -hmm. about this final look was so good i just i really wish that middle look had been so much stronger and even the first look is like fine so it's even yeah. that, like not really enough to make up for the other looks so and i kind of have to agree with michelle on this one like i don't really like that shade of green too much mm. so Fair. yeah there i like she was going for something different but yes uh <laughs> wait what was it that spice said we always hear what michelle thinks of green but we never uh, hear what, gr what green, thinks, green of thinks of michelle <laughs> i was like fair fair <laughs> <laughs> let us know green <laughs> she's so charismatic she's just a mess the twins are a mess i can't wait to see them again they'll be back i'm sure all right oh, sure. so uh, anitra does end up in the top uh ultimately doesn't win though i think just because of this i so again as i said oh, god now i don't know now that i'm looking at the second look at first i was convinced i would put sasha safe but now i just i want to reward her for the last look but the middle look is just i hate it so much and I yeah. love Anitra. So it's really tough. It's really tough to see. But that is our ball challenge. Ultimately, as a result of that, we have Spice and Selena in the bottom two. And okay, so this is Lil Nas X, which I did hear mm -hmm. some critiques about like, mm, this maybe wasn't the best runway song. But I just felt I felt like Selena was out of it. And I felt like Spice was just being Spice. It was a very strange lip sync. And yes. I, um, yeah, I agree. I was, at first I was like, oh my God, I love Nas X. Because I, I love that album. I love Nas X. a huge fan. Um, and when I watched it again, I was like, mm, yeah, maybe it's the song. I don't know mm. if this song is the one. They should have just went ahead and did Call Me By Your Name. Like that mm -hmm. would have been, that would have been it. Yeah. Um, Selena, I don't really know what she was. It looked like she was trying to like take the song seriously mm. and like really give you like emotion. And I don't know if it's because we just saw her lip sync to uh, uh, Celine Dion. So it was like, uh, I don't think that this works for this particular song. Um, the song is like, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's about just wanting to be loved. It's about desperation. It's about feeling lonely. It's about just like, just the frustration of loneliness and just wanting it. And I feel like that doesn't call for, I want 
someone to love me. Mm. Mm-hmm. I I need you to just like you need to lose it, like lose it. Like he's he's losing it on that mm-hmm. track, and I think that Spice definitely she was lending herself more into that energy. Um, I kind of feel like Spice won that lip sync, uh, but. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't judges. go that far. Oh my god, what a controversial think, thing you've said on this day. <laughs> I think she won. I don't. I think that. I don't think that Selena was really engaging to look at. To me, I was just like, I didn't really right. know what she was doing, and I feel like she picked it up towards the end. Um, and I don't think that Spice did a wonderful job either. Mm-hmm. But I think she beat Selena. Selena. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, Beth's not here to explain her point in more detail, but she did say that contrary to what I'm seeing online, I think Selena blew Spice out of the water in the lip sync. She really emoted a desperate desire to find somebody, and that was really what was captivating to me. In my opinion, I felt like she was having an emotional breakdown about being in the bottom. Like, that was how I interpreted her emotion of the song. Because even when I watched her in Hun- Untucked, I felt like she was stronger and untucked. Like, you know, I know we get the slow motion kind of sepia tones, like yeah. <laughs> flashback <laughs> moments. So it's tough to take. Okay, maybe it's tough. But it felt like she had more energy there than she did actually out on the runway when she was performing. So for me, I just, I was so nervous that she was just going to like break down and start crying. And yeah. then Spice has, you know, Spice. Spice is like a little puppy dog is just like, who knows what Spice is doing and just like running around and being cute, being funny, being Spice, being charismatic. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, I was captivated for Selena, but not probably by the reasons why either she wanted or why, or, or for what Beth mentioned was that she felt like it really matched the song. I do agree that it was weird. Like there was something just weird about the energy of the lip sync. And I, I, again, would attribute that to the fact that I felt like Selena was going through something up there on that stage. And then Spice yeah. just being little trotting around Spice. Although, you know, credit <laughs> to her for not actually trotting. She didn't trot. And credit. this would have been the song to do it to. Exactly. <laughs> I know, right? Um, um, I, did, I did think she was going to do a TikTok. I was like, do the TikTok dance. Because isn't there a TikTok dance to this song? I don't know. Probably. I mean, like I, I, like you said, I think that she was, I think Selena was just out of it. And yeah. that took me out of it. So I just, I just wasn't really engaged yeah, that's at fair. all when watching. Um, and I think... I don't know. I want I want her to do well, and I'm like really really rooting for Selena. So I'm I'm obviously I'm glad that she's still in the competition, um, but it is giving. It's I feel like kiss of death is happening soon. Mm. Like I feel like they the judges are growing tired of her, and that makes me very sad because I feel like she wants to be there so bad, and she mm-hmm. she really tried. She knew she was like, oh my god, like this is a design challenge. I do not want to be in the bottom again. Like I know that like I have issues when it comes to this, and she really gave it her all, and just wasn't there so like yeah do some more acting challenges do some more like stuff that can like really help her personality come through because i'm i'm tired of y'all dogging my girl out with these damn design challenges (laughs) (laughs) Ugh, i know now that now that that spice is gone now that Jax is gone i'm sort of looking to like okay what is that next group of queens who i feel like could be in danger unfortunately i do think that selena is one of them Maybe Malaysia, depending on how much hell she raises. Marsha, probably yeah. <laughs> at some point, like the 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 shoe is gonna other shoe's gonna drop. I think her. you probably just announced the the boot order <laughs> for the next. Three Honestly, <laughs> yeah, right. Depending on the individual challenges, but I just I just feel like the judges aren't connecting to them for whatever reason, and so I just I don't know. A little nervous. Okay, so Spice goes. Beth says this was Spice's time. I'm sad to see her go. And the tribute to Spice at the credits was really cr- cute by all the girls. So yes, Spice, Sugar and Spice, I think will forever be in the hearts of the certainly the queens on this season. They really seem to take a liking to them. I think mm-hmm. there's just there's they have this like innocent charisma positivity yes. that is infectious and is such and a fun not, energy to be around. And it's not put on like it's yeah. I it's think genuine. that's probably the thing that I love the most because I was like I was I was with everyone else I was like oh my god like okay they're twins it's a gimmick like it's gonna mm-hmm. be like they're from TikTok they're gonna be gratuitous just self absorbed Gen Zers right mm-hmm. like uh, now I sound like an old <laughs> millennial but <laughs> but no there's they were they were so kind and just like they just were happy to be there and they were in on the joke like they knew that they were like there because of 
because of their being twins and mm -hmm. they knew that like and they didn't try to like be anything that they weren't they just came on the show acted silly had a good time and i i i i, I was I, I hope that i get to meet them because i really would like to say to their faces like you guys were such a breath of fresh air mm -hmm. and i really kind of want to adopt some of like that energy that spice went out with she was like look i'm just trying to focus on the positive like yeah it, you know, it is what it is. If I have to lip sync, let me go le learn these lyrics. And, you know, if I go home, I literally get to be with my sister again. Like, that mm -hmm. that to me is just, like, how can you dislike anybody like that? So, I um, I hope to see them back. And I would like to see them back on separate seasons. I don't need to see them Ooh, back again. I would like to see them come back on an all-star season without each other. I think that would be really mm -hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would it eight and then also or no also it's nine and then ten. <laughs> yeah, right. I I think um, seeing Spice or Sugar also by herself um, would be interesting to see uh, mm -hmm. too to see how that would go, especially because we did get a little bit of their different personalities in the first couple episodes before Sugar went home, but. All right, we have a few other things to talk about from this episode we'd be remiss if we didn't touch on. So because this was the 15th anniversary of Drag Race in the 200th episode, there was a lot of sort of paying homage to the previous mm -hmm. seasons of Drag Race. And the first time we get this is in the mini challenge, which this is our first mini challenge of the season. Yes, right? Or at least the first one that we've seen. Sometimes they can cut them for time. Um, which oh, well, I guess it was knows. the reading challenge. Oh, the reading challenge, right. Yeah. So aside from the reading challenge, we get our first quick drag with photo bombing of iconic scenes from Drag Race history. This was really fun. It was really cute. It was really quick. I mean, obviously it has to be with the 60 minute episodes, but it was enough to see a little bit of each of the Queen's personalities. So I'm so happy that they included it here. Uh, were there yeah. any moments that stood out to you, Aman? I completely forgot about that part with, with Morgan McMichaels like shitting out an egg. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that entirely. <laughs> So that was fun. I loved who was the person that had a uh, uh, with a oh my god, I'm forgetting her name. How could I forget Ornacia? Ornacia and uh, Vivacious Lux. I love Lux mm -hmm. kicking, yeah, <laughs> Vivacious off. that was funny. Um, I liked I liked the Nitras jumping into the into the pool. It mm -hmm. was fun. It was it was a really fun challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was really fun. I don't know where Anitra got the bread also for the toaster, but I liked when Rue <laughs> right. was like, "What's the bread for?" She's like, "It's from her toaster." <laughs> Not where did you get the bread? I don't know. Craft yeah. services, I guess, is stocked <laughs> stocked with with bread. <laughs> um, yeah, the and it's the grunting for me about Lux. Lux also yeah. seems. I mean, Lux is like a student. It feels like of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes, she was quoted. Alyssa Edwards doing the you know the Bitch, whole scene. Look how you look, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anitra also, I can't remember what she was quoting. It's just it's so interesting to see. I mean, Drag Race has been on the air as we said for 15 years, and so A obviously it's become a staple. And especially the young queens that are coming up, right? That's like their form. What they know is drag because it's so formative um, to everything. We've seen queens go on and be so successful. I mean, hell, Shangela was just on the Mass Singer as like a guest presenter which was totally mm -hmm. mind-blowing. I was like, wait, what is Shangela doing here? Um, but it makes sense. She was on Dancing with the Stars. There's a lot of crossover there. Yeah, it's but really yeah. insane. Like, just, like, it how is. much time has gone by. And someone as young as Lux that literally grew up watching it, like, her, like Drag Race for her is probably, like, what, like, America's Next Top Model was for me. I, like, I, mm -hmm. I knew all the seasons I could name. Yeah. All, I could probably still name all the winners. Like, <laughs> it was just, I, I, I know the quotes. I know, like, the drama. I could even name what episode this happened in. Like, and that's. That's drag race is that for a lot of uh, young queer folk now. It's mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. What else do we have from this episode? So yeah, I don't. We can talk about Rue's dance or not. We can just move on from that. Uh, let's just move on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the one other thing that I do want to touch on is Anitra talking about her family situation because that was just so incredibly heartbreaking and just felt yeah. like so terrible that she had to go through that. I mean, I'm happy that she's been able to reconnect with her bio dad, but oh my gosh, I can't imagine being told like, oh yeah, no, it's fine. And then a week later, you're making All people uncomfortable. Them. You have to leave. Yeah. Oh my God. And they can't even let say goodbye to his brothers. Like it's, uh, people be going through it, man. And like, I just like, when I hear stories like that, like, I mean, obviously I didn't have everything perfect growing up and I certainly had my struggles, but like, I'm just so blessed to have the family that I do because mm -hmm. so many people just don't have that. And they, 
sometimes they don't even make it out of that situation alive. So it's yeah. just, uh, it's just so important to like find community and be the community for someone and just like be as kind as possible and yeah. all of the hallmark messages, honestly. <laughs> like, exactly. it's, it's just so, it's it, that because that's so rough. That's so rough. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I, and to have like so much success and to have, to, to have so many things going for her and then she's still like, I wish I had my mom though. It's like, damn. Like, and it's like, there's really nothing that can like replace that kind of love. You know what I mean? It's, it's such a mm -hmm. special and unique type of love to get from a mom. And when you don't have that, it's like, so and, keep her in my prayers. And even despite, I mean, what's happened with her mom, like she even still wanted to represent that side of her on the mm -hmm. runway with her first look, it was, she had the patches on either side representing her mom and her dad and where they're from. And, and that just, ugh, she just seems just like, to, like carry loving... that with you. And yeah. like, it's like, you know, you pop, I'm sure there's like a lot of like mixed feelings and like a lot of like resentment, but it's also like, it's still my mom. So it's like, mm -hmm. whoo, that's, that's heavy. That's really heavy. I know. I know. If anything, let's all be more loving. It's all okay. Let's take yes. some of Spice's energy. Okay. Yes. Focus on the positives. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next week, we are going to be doing one on one interviews for like a magazine. And I spied a little Frankie Grande. <laughs> Oh, not his ass again. <laughs> I know. As, and he was the one famous person. So I was like, oh, maybe they're going to bring like Tyler Oakley and, you know, the people that the, the social media people they brought in maybe or something. And it's like, no, okay. Just, um, just Frankie Grande. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> what a disaster. I don't know what this is going to entail, but I'm actually very curious to see because it looks really unique. Um, at yeah. Least it looks like a different of, kind of challenge. Yeah. Exactly. Especially of what we've been seeing recently. So I'm happy uh, to get to experience that. Plus, who knows? Maybe this will be the Selena Redemption arc. This will give her an opportunity to Yay. showcase her other skills. All right. Anything else, Mon, that you want to say about this episode or drag race in general? No, I'm uh, still thoroughly enjoying the season. Are we, is it next week that we're back in 90 or is it the week after that? So I believe it is the, ooh, is it the third or the 10th? I don't remember. I feel like it may be. I feel like it was double digits. So I feel like it might be the 10th. I feel like it was double digits as well. The 10th sounds correct to me. Yes, March 10th. Because the finale of Real Friends of WeHo or whatever that show is, is the third. So the 10th, we're going to be back. So this is going to be our last. And even after our episode. show ends, you're still not getting 90 minutes. Yeah. Don't, you don't even know how television works. <laughs> I talk trick, whatever. It's so fine. petulant. I can't. It's just... Oh, I can't. It's so <laughs> embarrassing. All right. Amon, where can people find you on social media? Is there anything you want to plug? I don't know if you want to mention BB Can, but that is a thing that's happening right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That, that was some bullshit. That was some bullshit. Like, look, we 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 hear y'all. We're with you. I'm sure, like all of us. Yeah. Me, Liana, yeah, Puya, the yeah. whole gang. We're all right there with y'all. Yeah. I'm still kind of. Uh, this could just be terminally delightful of me, but I still feel like they're going to fix it. I just it does it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. A piece of me is like someone along the lines is going to be like, okay, yeah, let's let's fix this so i'm holding out hope for that maybe it won't be immediately maybe it'll be halfway through the season we'll see but we're right there with y'all okay so yeah i don't really know what coverage of bb can is going to look like now uh mm -hmm. aside from the episodes but me and leon i'm sure we'll both still be there in some capacity so yeah, yeah with these mm -hmm. digital dailies i just i don't know i think what's most frustrating to me is like the logic the reasoning that they gave behind it because the first when i first heard that they were going down to essentially cutting live feeds to only having these digital dailies i thought it was financial i was mm -hmm. like oh it's because it's too expensive to have the crew there all you know to do the live feeds blah 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 mm -hmm. whatever so they're doing it to cut costs but then their explanation was about like protecting the mental health of the contestants so that felt a little bit like what? I would have believed it more if it was a money issue. So I, to me, it just feels like censorship on steroids is what they're going for, which is hilarious because the name of the show is Big Brother, but whatever. That's something that I'm sure will develop hopefully over the course of the next uh, few weeks. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Like, it, like I'm like, look, I'm all for mental health of contestants being protected, but I, at the same time, I don't. I'm not trying to like 
find a way to like say it as like not insensitive. I don't know if like taking the live feeds is going to stop any of that from happening. Like I think people like survivor players still get that kind of stuff too. And they mm-hmm. have episodes like mm-hmm. people are just going to be nasty because people are yeah. nasty. And yeah, maybe you're cutting down the amount of like ammo that people can use against people on the live feeds, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It's still going to be something. So I, it, it's, it's strange, and I don't. And I've I've always felt like Canada has been so much better at that kind of stuff. Anyway, so it's like if anything, I feel like us down here, us our ratchet asses down here should have gotten rid of the feeds before Canada did. Like <laughs> if Canada's doing it, I'm like so scared for like what could happen over here. So it's just like okay, whatever. Yeah. Well, well, we will see how that situation develops. Is of course the premiere of BB Can comes closer March eighth. But what is going to happen before that is the premiere of Survivor 44, which is going to be March 1st. So I did a preseason podcast with Mike Bloom, if you want to check that out, for the B&B. And then, of course, we're going to be back with weekly coverage uh, <laughs> with actually Kevin Jacobs of BB Can fame <laughs> for our first episode. So we will get some thoughts on the ever-developing BB Can situation. And then I feel like I did something else. Oh, Mass Singer, of course. How could I forget? Uh, Mass Singer <laughs> is going strong. Episode two, Puya and I are having a good time talking about everything. And yes, Shangela had a cameo, which was very exciting. I think the first drag queen that we've seen on the Mass Singer, which I have been very much advocating for drag queens to be in those costumes. I would love to see Alaska perform Jinx, someone that we know has a lot of singing talent, but you know, maybe one day in the future. All right, that does it for us. If you want to leave your star ratings and reviews, you can go to robhaswebsite.com slash drag race to do that. Thank you to Scott St. Pierre and the whole RHAP team for all their help behind the scenes. And we'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.